I'm Corbett Wall with DB Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday, August the 26th, brought to you in part by Macrosin by Bimeda. Macrosin is a bold, straight shooting to lathromycin injection that does what it's supposed to do for you, for your cattle, and most importantly for your bottom line. For more information, go to macrosin.com. Also, Joplin Regional Stockyards in Carthage, Missouri. They're going to start at 4.30 in the morning here on, on Monday for the regular cattle auction. Uh, feeder cattle are expecting 5,500 head, which is a typical run for them. Don't forget they got a special cow sale coming up on September the 4th. It's back on Wednesday following their weigh-ups. It'll start at 4.30 in the afternoon. And also remember you can always watch Joplin Regional Stockyard Sales on dvauction.com. Fewer cattle and more beef. That may be a, a reason that our fundamentals are not staving off the pressure that we're seeing here uh, due to our technicals and, and nearing the end of our, our high cycle there. But uh, our cattle slaughter year to date is down 4.2%. Of course, we know there's fewer cattle around, so we've been slaughtering fewer cattle. Our beef production year to date is only down 1.3%. It's quite a bit of room right there. But uh, last week, our cattle slaughter was down 2.9%, and our beef production was up 1.4%, with weights 30 pounds bigger uh, than a year ago. So that goes to show you what a difference the weights make there. And one reason that we're, we're finding more beef production also is because our beef, port, beef imports are up year to date. Our beef imports, now this is beef, not cattle, up 18% uh, year to date over a year ago. That is big. Uh, the biggest increase from our major uh, beef importers our Argentina is up 44%. Brazil, of course, two of our, our, our big four our big Brazilian outfits, it's up 46%. Australia beef imports are up 75% over a year ago. And Uruguay, which we were trying to get rid of, is up 89% over a year ago beef imports. That is a ton, guys. That's why we've got this beef still. Uh, but we've got fewer cattle. And if you looked at just last week, our steer and heifer slaughter made up 81.7% of the slaughter, where our cows and bulls was only 18.2% because they're just not out there, guys. Typically, our cow and bull slaughter would be running over 20% of the total slaughter. So that gives you an idea. Uh, even though we've got great fundamentals, uh, we're bringing in uh, beef and, and a lot of our down... Uh, our, our, uh, our smaller slaughter each week is because of the lack of cows and bulls. It's not steering heifers or fed beef there. Cattle on feed report come out on Friday. Slightly bearish. Neutral to slightly bearish. But uh, if you look at our, our inventories for August 1st, they were expected to be 100%. They come in at 100.5%. Like I said, slightly bearish. Placements during July, uh, they came in, uh, or the, the expectations were for 104.2, and they came in at 105.8. Not the 106 that you saw advertised, but it was actually 105.8, but still uh, fairly significantly more. Uh, our marketings were expected to be 108.2%, which I thought was way up there, and they came in at 107.7. Not a totally bearish cattle on feed report, but slightly bearish. And in this atmosphere right now where they're looking for anything bearish to, uh, to, to tail the, the board off, it, it could be seen that way a little bit. But, uh, you know, you look at your politics and that has a lot to do with, with what's going on, guys. Uh, this, this Kamala Harris regime is not friendly towards agriculture or anybody that has long-term assets like land, uh, inherited land and things like that. I tell you what, this unrealized assets uh, tax is going to be a major, major player for our ag sector there. And uh, if you're not paying attention to it, you absolutely need to. 
Uh, we saw late last week that uh, RFK, Robert F. Kennedy there, he has uh, he's dropped out of the race or, or suspended his campaign, I guess he should say, but he's pretty much dropped out of this uh, this election and he has endorsed Trump. And you may not think that's a big deal. He, he was polling somewhere between three and five percent in, in some major areas there. But a lot of the Democrats that have been slow to come over to the Republican side were Kennedy Democrats. Both my grandparents were Kennedy Democrats. And, and there's a lot of them still out there. And a lot of the next generation that uh, was heavily influenced uh, by, the, by their parents there were still Kennedy Democrats. And maybe now that RFK has come over and endorsed Trump because of the way he was treated by the Democratic Party, it may bring a few more over. But we have got, uh, we've got to, to get Trump back in there. Whether you like Trump or you don't like Trump, his policies are so much more friendly but towards, uh, towards business and towards agriculture. I can't help it that we saw all-time record high prices of cattle during the Biden administration or the Magoo administration. It was just their time in the cycle, guys. But uh, if you look at it, uh, you know, we've got to get our, our input prices down. We've got to keep our fuel under wraps there. And, uh, and and we've got to get interest down. This interest is making a big, big difference uh, whenever you're trying to operate in a farmer ranch outfit there. But you look at your board for last week, August live cattle futures. Monday was unchanged. Tuesday was down 177. Wednesday up 20. Thursday up $1.32. And Friday was actually up 2 cents. So your August spot live cattle futures ended up only down 23 cents, uh, ending at 182.57. That, that's that's not too bad there. But but you get further out and it got worse. October ended the week at 175.70, which was down 260. And you might think on, on your fat cattle trade, you know we're we're not able to demand delivery there whenever we get into the spot month. Maybe we need to go to a cash settlement like we have on feeder cattle because it keeps at least that spot market a little bit or that spot contract a little bit more true but we barely have any negotiated cash price to make a cash price settlement and it's dwindling every single week so who knows how much longer we would have that but uh, you know CME is wanting your thoughts on the live cattle contract get on there uh, take their survey and tell them what you think I think what we need is to be able to demand delivery uh, once we get into the spot month there, which would help your longs out quite a bit. August feeder cattle, Monday was down 40 cents, Tuesday down 417. That's what turned everything upside down last week was your Tuesday contract down 417. Wednesday was up a buck five, Thursday was up 272, and Friday was up 60 cents. So your August spot feeder cattle contract ended the week at 242.57, only down 20 cents. Now that's not too bad, but everybody kept dwelling and your cash markets dwelled and everything on that down 417 on Tuesday. But to get further out, just like your live cattle contracts, uh, the further out you went, uh, the lower you dropped, which made it hard uh, to find the LRPs out there that you really enjoyed compared to what we've had over the last several months. But September feeder cattle contracts ended the week at 238.57, which was down 93 cents. Now look at your grains. December corn ended the week at 391. That was down one and a half cents a bushel. That's cheap. November beans ended the week at 973, gaining 34 and a quarter cent a bushel. Kansas City hard red winter wheat for December uh, ended the week at 535, which was down 20 cents a bushel. Your fat cattle trade up through Thursday, we had sold 39,400 head, which was really less than half of what we typically sell. But your live uh, cattle prices for fat steers and heifers up through Thursday on a direct basis in your five area feeding region was 182 to 190. That's $2 lower. Now your weighted average 
up through Thursday was 185.73, about three and a half dollars lower, so worse than that. Dress trade, fat steers and heifers near five very on a direct basis, ranged from 288 to 295, five to seven dollars lower. And your weighted average through Thursday was 293.94, around four dollars lower than the previous week. Now on Friday we saw a little bit more trade, but not much before two o'clock. Now after two o'clock and after your cattle on feed report, uh, we're not sure how much more traded. Uh, we'll find that out and I'll give that to you on our next feeder flash, but we have to wait till the roundup comes out on Monday morning. But Iowa on Friday before two o'clock sold 400 head, about 19,800 head uh, through the week there. Live prices on Friday, 183 to 184 and a half. It's really unclear how much we've lost in our northern plains. It's lower. We don't know how much. It's probably 2 to $4 lower, but we'll have to see uh, if we had any more trade on Friday. Nebraska sold 150 heads all on Friday early, about 13000 for the week, and your live price was at 184 We've pretty much uh, eliminated the northern premium on our fat cattle sales here. We've been running several dollars more in the Northern Plains and the Southern Plains, but this past week, uh, we pretty much eliminated that because on, can uh, on, on Friday morning or up through two o'clock in the afternoon, Kansas sold 600 head on Friday, 4,200 for the week, which is about half or less than what they normally do. And live prices in Kansas on Friday at 183, Texas sold 900. That's odd to see Texas sell more than the other areas anytime, especially on Friday. But uh, early Friday, Texas sold 900 head, 4,400 for the week. Live prices in Texas from 183 to 184. And that 184 was seen uh, with competitive bidding on an online uh, platform with Fed Cattle Exchange, which is doing a really good job. And they're selling uh, the beef on dairy cattle, uh, mostly on the grid, and they were at 184. Uh, it, it's just a good way to sell cattle, and you guys can join up and offer your cattle up for bids online at the Fed Cattle Exchange through Central Stockyards, guys. Box beef cutout values were kind of uneven last week, uh, but didn't really respond to the board. They they held up fairly well. Box beef cutout values your weighted average. Uh, choice cuts last week, all of last week's sales, 315.83. That was 57 cents lower on your weighted average. Uh, but your, your late uh, Friday afternoon sales were 317.34. That was about a buck and a half higher than your weighted average, so really not too bad. Select sales, all of last week's weighted average ended up 301.32. That was up 14 cents from your previous week's weighted average, but your late Friday sales uh, come out at $300.46, which was about a buck lower than that weighted average. So just kind of hanging in there, uh, pretty close to steady on your box beef cutouts. Choice select spread on your weighted average last week was about $14.5. All that based on 647 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings, which is pretty typical movement there on the spot. Slaughter for last week ended up better than the previous week at 608,000. That was 6,000 better than the previous week, but still 19,000 less than the same week a year ago. Talk about your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction based on an 800-pound cash auction steer, seven-day moving average, ended the week at 241.80, which was down 593 for the week, and that's about what your sell barns did almost six dollars lower for the week on a seven day moving average. Your latest CME cash feeder cattle index ended up at 241.70 at the end of the week. That was about five bucks lower. But cash feeders, all classes were five to ten dollars lower with spots as much as fifteen dollars lower. Saw the full brunt of that there Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, your, your calves were no better. It's really really hot and some of these soft calves coming in, especially the unweaned ones. Nobody wants them. In the Southern Plains, it was over 100 degrees all week last week, and nobody really wants that starting to cool off up in the Northern parts. But 
uh, big sale that we had late last week was Winter Livestock in Winter, South Dakota. They had a special there, 5,300 head. Pretty dang good sale. And if you look at this sample of loads and bigger, uh, weighing 800 pounds to 1,000 pounds of steers there, you see that is very respectable. Not much lower than, than we saw just a few weeks ago when we were coming off our all-time highs there. But uh, very respectable and better than we saw than a lot of sales uh, late last week on loads of 800 to 1,000 pound steers, including 68 steers weight 832 that bring 250 275. And that's, you know, that's 11 bucks higher than your real-time index. So that's way above what's normal there. Another sale that I don't believe we've ever talked about that sold on Friday was La Crosse Livestock in La Crosse, Kansas there. They sell 57 steers, weighed 885, and bring 240, weighing that close to 900 pounds, and that's a good sale, guys. They just don't hardly bring much more than that. But the most impressive quote that I saw anywhere late last week or over the weekend in your Macrosyn, no BS, top quote for the day, indeed come out of that special at winter livestock auction in winter south dakota it was 67 steers weighed 943 and bring 246.50 and that's your feeder flash for monday